This is a 1993 Ford Escort ZX2 and uh, it is a no start and first thing I'm doing is just a quick no spark test. Do you need to get your phone Jimmy? Do you want to grab it? No? Okay. So I'm um, just using a low tech you know, method that I could get electrocuted doing but don't care and uh, I'm just holding the air gap here next to the, the spark plug that's removed and go ahead and crank it Jimmy. Okay good. All right, as you can see, no spark. Next low tech tip is to watch our service engine soon light or check engine light. And this is for Fords only. Uh, I cannot promise you that this works on other vehicles, but we want to crank it while we're watching that light. On Fords, if the computer is receiving a crank signal, it will turn that light off during cranking. So the check engine light will actually turn off during cranking when the computer receives a crank signal. Next quick test is to watch the tack, cranking it. Tack does not move, so the next direction we're going is toward the crank sensor. We'll get trouble codes, if there are any, on the scan tool next. So trouble codes aren't going to help us on this one. Someone was here already before us. There was some work done on this vehicle. We had new plugs and new coil and, and some other work done. Symptoms were he was driving it and it lost power and I guess he decided to do a tune up. I'm really not sure everything that was done, but as you can see, trouble codes are not going to help us. Next test is RPM on the scan tool during a crank. As you can see, no RPM on the scan tool either. I am now looking for cam and crank data pids. And you guys need to ignore this IAT sensor that's reading negative 40. I have the mass airflow unplugged. We are in the process of removing some components so we can get to the crank sensor and test it directly. Just wanna make sure that we don't have any other data pids we can use. So there are no cam and crank data pids on this vehicle anywhere. I checked every single data list. None of these are going to help me. I have no trouble codes. I have no RPM signal. Next thing I need to do, given this being a Ford and the check engine light, not turning off during cranking and not having spark, I'm going after the crank sensor next. So we did some digging, we looked in the typical locations around the harmonic balance or in the front, couldn't find the crank sensor. We ended up having to pull a diagram to find it and it is buried uh, below. It's like behind the catalytic converter and it runs down this harness. Maybe I do need a light. So the sensor is down in this location right where my index finger is pointing and it looks like it reads off of the flywheel on this design. And uh, we were hoping to you know, the fan shroud was in, in the way. Um, we were hoping to, you take that light out of there, Jimmy. So we were hoping to gain access to the wiring here and I just split the, the protective cover over top and what I found is a big thick wire here which suggests there is a shield on this and I do not want to cut open here. So we didn't have a choice. We had to remove the fan shroud to get down in there so I can test this thing. Let me show you the wiring diagram real quick before we test it. Guys, this is exactly what we were just going over in class today. Uh, when I say guys, I'm speaking to my current students. You guys that uh, are following along, you will find information where I talk about shielded circuits in my section 21 lectures. But that's exactly what this vehicle has is a shield and I do not want to cut into that and damage the shield. I have to go down to the sensor directly. If that was not an option, we were going to have to go to the computer to do it. Uh, unfortunately, that is difficult to get to as well, so we're going at the sensor. We removed the fan shroud to get to it. Something else I find interesting, we have a cam sensor, so why is this not setting a fault code for the crank? Uh, I have seen vehicles not set crank sensor codes with bad crank sensors when we don't have a cam. Not sure that I can say that I've ever seen one. No, I, I'm sure that I have, that I've seen a vehicle not set a crank code even while it's receiving a cam signal. 
every car is different in how they react to this. Again, the codes were cleared too. Would this set a crank sensor code if I continue to crank it? I don't know. I'm not going to let that distract me from what I'm trying to do here, which is check this crank sensor. All right, a concern for any diagnostic tech in doing this kind of testing is unplugging the sensor. Unplugging the sensor could actually cause this thing to start working and make diagnosis a lot more difficult because you, then you'd be unsure of direction. Now, unplugging it, plugging it back in, the car starts, chances are it needs a crank sensor, but what I tend to like to do is not to disturb a connector and try to back probe it whenever possible. The problem is where this thing is located, I'm showing you the two wires. I cut the tape away down below. The shield is up higher, so the lower part of the sensor is not shielded. I can't really back probe this very well because there's a pipe right here. It's a coolant pipe, I think, um, and it's kind of in my way. I may actually have to unplug this first and then get some back probing tools in there and plug it back in, I'm not sure. Okay, so back probing was not an option, so I'm using two piercing tools that I am not apologizing for. Uh, I will say that when you're finished doing something like this, put a little bit of liquid electrical tape on the holes that you made and be good to go. No choice here. Let's see what the signal looks like. Just set up on a 14 volt, five millisecond screen. That's too fast. Let me just reset this. hundred milliseconds pretty, pretty decent beginning setup hundred millisecond screen five plus minus five volt go ahead and crank that Jimmy okay sounds like our starters going bad and our batteries weak you hear that little click initially that little all right no signal on the crank Show you what the cam looks like. Ford likes to use Ford likes to use floating grounds. So you guys that are follow, following along uh, will understand why I'm back probing both the positive and negative leads. I am worried about amplitude of these signals. This is how you want to connect it on vehicles with floating grounds. This should be my cam signal now. Go ahead and crank it. Okay saw our pulse there. Let me readjust these scales. We'll take some more time and we will lower these. Amplitude and frequency changes with speed. Go ahead, crank it. Okay. See a good cam pulse. So we have a cam signal and no crank definitely needs a crank sensor. Uh, what we want to do, final check, well we can try it, I don't know if it will work, is a bypass test on the crank sensor. Okay, move my leads back on the crank. The crank should have a much higher frequency signal, but I'll stay on the same time base and setups that we saw the cam signal on. Go ahead and crank that again. Okay, good. All right, so we have no crank signal at all. Uh, the last step really would be opens and shorts in the wiring, but this sensor produces its own voltage and even with opens I should have a signal. So it's really shorts that we're worried about. All right, we're going to try this bypass test. Uh, what I've done is I have uh, left the connections to the crank sensor and so we have crank positive and negative wires here and I don't know which one's which, it doesn't matter. Fords use that floating ground, so I have to really induce a signal on both. And for me to be able to do that, I'm just, uh, try this. I'll use my piercing tools. And then I'm taking my test light, connect it to battery positive. I touch a ground, it should light. Okay. And so I want to induce a voltage in here, and I'm just going to go back and forth. You see my light's not lighting on either one of these, so 
That tells me my circuit's not shorted to ground. That's important to note here. Um, we need to crank it because we need a cam signal to occur at the same time. And if I can make this do it, it'll be firing the spark at the wrong time, so it'll pop or backfire once, which is really what I want to hear. Um, go ahead and try it, Jimmy. Okay. I have never had luck with these Fords in doing a bypass test. I, I can do it on some VR type sensors, but I can't on Fords. <clears throat> I'm not sure why. Can you watch that RPM signal? Let me pull you up here. All right, we're doing this one more time. I have my friend Jim here uh, looking at the scan tool to see if the RPM changes. If it does, I'll let you guys see it. So again, we're gonna give it a cam by cranking it, and I'm giving it the crank by moving the signal back and forth. Okay, go ahead. Okay, any RPM signal? Nothing. Okay. Really disappointed that I cannot induce a voltage on a Ford. It's just the way the circuit is monitored with the floating ground. I just can't simulate that signal. So, um, putting a crank sensor in it. I apologize, you guys won't be here for the new crank sensor that's put in, but that's the way it goes. I'm wondering if I can, could I put the cam sensor signal into the crank just because. I, don't know. I just really want to trigger this circuit right, yeah. just because it would be cool. Um, I wonder if it would work. See, I, but it would be simultaneous. The signals would be wrong. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. It's the worst that happens. I'm not going to hurt the sensor. Like it's brown. I'm not holding you up here, am I, Jimmy? Okay. Okay. Guys, don't try this at home. Take this off. I don't think this is gonna work, but go ahead and crank it. Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. I mean, I can't, with my jumper in there, I can't even show you guys what I try to do voltage-wise to see if, yes I can, hold on. I have another set of leads. A lot of these computer systems, you can trick them into doing stuff like this. You can make things spark. It makes you feel better about making a call. I will feel good about it anyway, but it makes, certainly makes for a better video when I can show a result instead of just saying, hey, take my word on it. It needs a crank sensor. Jimmy, uh, we're at Litwin Automotive. He's too far away for me to come back to show you guys the after fix. Speaking of fixes, I think it's about time I fix my Vantage Pro. It's got a bad solder joint and it doesn't like to turn on. I think we were on 100 millisecond. Plus and minus two volts. Well, if I did this right, I should still have my cam signal here. Good, crank that. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go 500 milliseconds. I'm not sure what I was on last time. Gotta crank it. All right, see my cam pulse. I'm actually sending that cam pulse down into the crank. The computer's not reacting to it. It just doesn't like what it sees. So. Uh, what we know though, final uh, wrap up for this, because I won't be here for the new sensor to be put in. What, uh, we weren't worried about opens because open circuits, we would have had a good signal at the sensor, but not at the computer. Um, 
so in our case, we're mainly just worried about the sensor or a computer, sorry, a uh, sort to ground. And on my test light, when I did my bypass test, did not light when I was connected to battery positive. So no sort to ground in that circuit. You need a sensor, Jimmy. And I did say when I, when I was down there and I was touching that sensor, I could feel movement of the flywheel when I pushed on the sensor. So I know there's rotation. That'd be the last thing is making sure that there's movement of the flywheel. Um, obviously the engine cranks too, so the flywheel's not an issue. Crank sensor, no question about it.